Bonjour. Uh, I'm very happy to talk about uh, energy and climate change. It's a long story, already talked 100 times, but we need 100 times more to talk. I'm very fortunate to say we have a wonderful debate engaging panelist audience on imminent challenges like uh, very hot issue like US-China trade tensions or Iranian sanction or short-term and long-term agenda on energy security and sustainability. Above all, our fight against climate change. Let me summarize wonderful debate into just eight points. Number one, recognition of big picture, where we are sitting, how things may evolve. Point number one, United States is turning into undisputed leader of oil and natural gas. They are champion of fossil world, fossil fuel world. On the contrary, China is switching to green. They became champion of renewable energy development. Three, solar PV is on track to be the cheapest source of new electricity. Absolutely, some are less than 3% per kilowatt hour in the main places. Number four, electrification. This is already a very key word today. Electrification it will be accelerated in various front. Air conditioning, mobility, and digitalization. This is a big point, number one. Number two, about US-China trade tension. We approached from various perspectives, and the conclusion was tension between two countries will not have big impact on energy trade. Because US gas and oil has many outlets, not to say of Europe or Asia Pacific, and China is a small area for import. And China has many places to import oil and natural gas. Russia, Middle East, Asia countries, and even domestic energy sources. Number three, China is greening very fast its energy system, and that will be accelerated. But it is not just because of government policy. Because of huge market, the size matters, and many players actively competing with each other. Entrepreneurs or big companies, national companies as well, for example, clean tech companies in China was roughly about 2,700, 2,005. It grew up to well over 50,000 in 2015 and already continued to grow. And China is in the process of launching the world's largest carbon market. Actually, my, my friend is designing this very carefully, and that will be most effective and the largest. Again, the size matters. Number three, over 50% of newly registered EVs in 2017 are all in China. Again, size matters and policy and entrepreneurship matters in greening. Point number four, very topic issue we discussed one belt, one road here, and there is an energy dimension on that issue. But the story is quite interesting. 130 new coal-fired power plants is in the process of building under Chinese leadership along Belt and Road region. 130 new coal-fired power plants. And just looking back short history, from year 2000 to 2016, well over 240 coal-fired power plants has been built under the Chinese leadership, finance, and technology, again, in the region. So ironically, China is greening at home and blacking abroad. Number five, impact of Iranian sanction. This is a really hot issue, and we had uh, someone from Aramco, we have someone from Total, and good exchange. 
But conclusion was that even though the U.S. pressure could be very tight, China may have a way to you know, set aside all these sanctions and can import directly from China by quoting in Liminbi, not dollars. But in the worst case scenario, if Middle Eastern tension may go up and geopolitics may override rationality over everyone, there could be a risk of missile attacks against Strait of Hormuz, which could increase skyrocket oil prices again. Nightmare could happen because 20% or more of oil is traded through that Hormuz Strait and roughly 38% of LNG should have again come from that outlet. Number five, number six, uh, op there is a uh, opt optimistic view on transport electric sectors because of uh, increased deployment of investment and technology into number one, battery to be mounted on the car, and mass production is making every cost lower, and plus favorable policy environment. However, and there's a big fire, but someone intervened. Look, there are so many IEC internal combustion engine cars are deployed, far bigger than the EV, and once they are deployed on the road, they'll stay alive at least seven, eight, nine years in some European countries over 15 years. So it's very difficult to replace all these. So I proposed why not convert used cars into a vehicle. Cost is much cheaper. And if you recall wonderful experience of uh, wedding of Henry, King Prince Henry, he drove Blue Jaguar out of the Windsor Castle. It was converted electric vehicle. Why don't take the example from this and then compete, uh, complement these new EVs and converted EVs. Number seven, nuclear. Nuclear is an issue we really have to tackle with talk about climate change and energy. But conclusion was nuclear could be the most costly sources for electricity if it is newly built nuclear power plants because of intensified security safety requirements after Fukushima. Only way out would be generation four, that is small and medium uh, uh, scale uh, nuclear power plants. But still, SMR is not easy to build. Last point, technology. We always dream about technology. Today, there are many technologies we haven't dreamt of 10 years ago. 20 years ago. So why not new technology surprise us in coming 10 to 20 years and make revolution after revolution? But for that purpose, we recognize two important things. The death, valley of death for technology. First valley is technical valley to develop into really usable technology. Number two, the financial valley of death. Even though there is a demo plant if no one invests for commercialization, it won't be there. So why not overcome all these? But uh, bottom line is it is a matter of mindset for people because climate change is my mind. So if men don't think that way, women don't think that way, it won't be solved. So last conclusion is now we, and we have plenty of agenda to discuss next year in this World Policy Conference. Thank you very much.